Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we bless you, Father. Thank you for your grace to teach and minister your truths. I pray for every heart that is listening. Let their hearts indeed receive and walk in it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Say with me, Father. I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. John chapter 8 and verse 31. Jesus speaking here says, If you, he says, then Jesus said to those Jews which believe on him. If you continue in my word, if you continue in my word, you continue by obedience. That's all I've been sounding to you all week. You continue by obedience, obedience. There is no way you'll be walking with God and you'll not be obeying something. See, God is not only in the academics, he's in the practical. <laughs> good. Yeah, there is no way you'll be obeying God and uh, there's no way you will discover truth if you're not walking in this in obedience. You have to be obeying. And like I told you yesterday, it's in the obeying, that's in the doing, you encounter challenges. As, and it's when you encounter challenges, you have a, a great opportunity to be guided into the truth of that thing. Now, let me tell you this. Every command God gave to his children we find in scriptures from the Garden of Eden to Moses and all the commands that God gave to them. Please know this today. He gave them all those commands with the mindset that they will not be able to keep this command except by the Holy Ghost. So even when he was giving those commands, he was preparing them for the season where they will have to depend on the Holy Spirit. No man can keep the commands of God without the Holy Spirit. No one. Why? Because it's the Holy Spirit that will now bring you into the purpose of those commands. So God knew these things. So when, when, when you begin to look at it, that these commandments are so hard that they cannot even keep it. See, I come me for it. The command is not for everyone. It is for those to whom it was. And, and, and this is one thing the Holy Spirit does to us. He helps us fulfill. And, and even that statement, fulfill, a lot of people have a misunderstanding concerning it. Because Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy the, the law, but I came to fulfill it. A lot of people think fulfill means put an end to it. If, if fulfill means put an end to it, then what's the difference between it and destroying it? Fulfilling simply means to show you the purpose of the commandments. That's what it means. So, so I didn't come to destroy the law. I came to show you the purpose for the law. Why God, God in his wisdom, he said you should keep it. Okay. So when God said thou shalt not steal, what's the purpose of it? Oh, he doesn't want us to go to hell. Is that a purpose? It takes one just believing that God is a forgiving God to knock off that purpose. And so if I still God will forgive me. Won't he forgive me? And he will forgive you. And so your point is not strong enough. And that's what I've made people, because of this wrong mindset, that's what I've made a lot of people to go into sin and continue in sin. And, and, and people are so bold these days. <laughs> you know, in their thoughts, people are so bold. That's why the gospel has to be beyond reproach. I was telling you something about my children. They are, they, I mean, you don't just throw an answer at them. They will probe. So some messages we preach, uh, we end up making people unbelievers. As long as your message is laced with fear, all people need to discover is that God is not as you think he is. And, and that's it. You've lost them. Uh, 
people are so bold. I say, you know, you know those messages people preach and say, oh, if you have sexual intercourse, there's a transference of spirits. And and someone who thinks he's intelligent is not asking. That sorry, how how do how is there a transference of spirits? Is it true the release of semen and all that? Oh yes, 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 yes. So if I use a condom, there's no transference of spirits. And they've scattered your reasoning. <laughs> I'm telling you, they've scattered your reasoning. And then you're not beginning, no, you see, these things are spiritual. You see, you're already beginning to contradict yourself. Because there must be a point of contact. So that just nullifies that whole idea. Because sexual intercourse is a spiritual thing and all that and all that. You must go beyond all those reasoning and state what the truth is. Why doesn't God want? Why doesn't? Why does God say don't steal? Very simple. Because he provides all you need. It's foolishness to steal. It's foolishness. Every law God has given when you obey it now, it says, don't steal. Okay, so I'm not going to steal. I'm not going to steal. But you're going to live in a life that one day you'll get into a situation where stealing might become an option. How do you handle that genuine situation? So now you're not, I'm not going to steal. I'm not going to steal. I'm not going to steal. Okay, because I want to obey God. Okay, good decision. And now you grow up, you start having needs. And in having needs, you find yourself in situations where it looks like, because maybe you're walking somewhere and everybody's stealing. You're like, they are stealing, they are buying new cars, they are building houses, they are training their children in good schools. Now you don't want to steal and you don't have the resources to pay your children's school fees. So you have to take them to a local school and you, you, you can drive a good car because you cannot afford it. And every day you're taunted at work. Every day you're, you see these people, you, 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 they see you, your car is parked and they're trying to get a mechanic to fix your car because you cannot afford a better car. And these guys zoom, you know, and pass you like, ah, I know this girl. Ah, that's my colleague. Hmm. And then every day you keep seeing them. Year one, you think judgment of God is going to come to them. Year one, it doesn't come to them. Five years, no judgment, no judgment seems to have come to them. And then that's enough to begin to make you reason and think. Is something wrong with obeying God? If you've never had these thoughts before, so you know this is your strength. So you now begin to look and say, what's the purpose? Then sometimes you want to just tell yourself, eh, in case they die now, where would they go to? They'll go to hell. Me, if I die, I'll go to heaven. I'm sorry to bust your bubbles. You will not go to heaven because you did not steal. There are more things to look at that will qualify you for heaven. Not just because you did not steal. And, and they may go to heaven. That's a shocking thing. They may go to heaven. Because you thought they stole. But they may go to heaven for another reason. See, I've told you this before. The thief on the cross, when Jesus died, went to heaven, or no, went, rather, went to paradise before Abraham. Yes. So how do you explain that? Abraham lived his life walking by faith and doing everything right and following God, you know. <laughs> and but the, the guy who stole all his life just at the cross, Obey Jesus. So, but guess what? The same way the Bible says, Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. So also that guy on the cross believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. You see that? The opportunity he had was that he believed God at the nick of time. And Jesus said to him, today you will be with me in paradise. And that's exactly what happened. Praise God. Now then, 
in obeying, you will encounter challenges. So I was giving the example that like you're not going to steal. Okay, everything is looking. So what do you do? The mistake you will make is to cut off your, just say, Kai, I'm tired. See this thing, it does not work. God, I know you're there, but uh, all, this while, all these years I've not been stealing. I uh, thought you you're going to prosper me, but you didn't prosper me. So it looks like and I've, I've waited to see all these men. You judge them. You did not judge them. In fact, they are getting stronger and bolder. Now they are even punishing me. They are scheming against me. And you're quiet. What do you want him to do? Hey, no, no, you should do so. He kill them. Uh-uh. He will not become unrighteous because of you. So what do you do? The right thing to do. I'm keeping the word. But then I'm having difficulties living life, keeping the word. So what do you do? You go before the Lord and say, Lord, you know, you, you commanded us not to steal. Yeah. I've been working for five years now and I've not stolen. But I'm having a challenge. And that's how you become, in, become vulnerable with God. Be truthful. Say it as it is. I've worked for five years and I've not been able to afford a car. My colleagues that steal, see the cars they drive. I'm, I say, don't ever make the mistakes of comparing yourself with them. Understand what I'm mean? just follow me carefully. So you look at it like, Lord, they drive better cars than I do. Not because I'm saying give me a car like their own, but See, that's where you'll be making mistakes. Say, I want to drive good cars like them. No. Don't say, I want to drive good cars like them. If you say you want to drive, be careful with your words when you're talking to God. Because apart from God, Satan is listening to you. Okay. So, like, God, I believe I should drive good cars. I believe I should live in good houses. I believe my children should go to good schools. I believe so. I don't think you brought me into this world to suffer. But then, they get it by stealing. I will not steal like them. But how am I supposed to get it? Good question. Good question. Now you've asked a question that will open you up to truth. Yes. And in that truth, get ready for instructions of obedience. Because see, the Lord will come, he will teach you. He will say, am I not the one that is supposed to give you a car? Am I not the one that says, I know God doesn't, I told you God doesn't do this thing. Don't let people deceive you in this life. Please, don't let people, don't let people make you walk in unbelief. God does not give money. Who told you God does not give money? You know what they now say? So will he rain down the money from heaven? <laughs> he doesn't need to rain down the money from heaven. He has enough on the earth to give you. He doesn't need to rain down one from heaven. On this earth, he has a no. Now, now, I'm just, I just repeated to you what exactly God said to me many years ago. He says, so how am I going to get the money? He says, son, I've got a lot of money on the earth to give you. Yeah. So God begins to teach you. Like, I'll give you. Did you ask me for a car and I didn't give? Did you ask me for, I said, okay, Lord. Yes, I understand. So what should... Miss them, be smart. Don't go and say, hey, you know, I tried to ask the Lord. I've heard people talk that too. I tried to ask the Lord, I don't know why. And God rebuked me, eh? God rebuked me, eh? And so what did he say to you? He just asked me a question. He said, have I ever, hey, I, I, I felt so ashamed. Eh? So after then, what? No, I, I said, I've not asked that question again. No. Has it changed your life? No. See, you you, you didn't finish. You, you know, I come don't be timid in the presence of God. Be bold. He, he said, even him, whenever he shows up, guess what he said? Fear not. That fear not also means don't be timid. Oh, Lord, I'm so sorry. Lord, I'm so... You know, the same way people react, relate with people. 
Oh, sir, um, I don't know where we, you know, we've been working for you. We, we, we think at this point we, we need a parents. Who are you to ask me? I'm so sorry, sir. I'm so sorry. I never brought you. Sir, please. I never brought you. What kind of timidity is that? See, learn to frame and be intelligent about your communication. So don't get timid when God begins to tell you, have you asked me for a can and it not give you? No, sir. Have you asked me? No, sir. Eh? So what is your problem? Nothing, sir. I don't have any problem, sir. I'm sorry I even brought it up, sir. Eh, I, I, I will not bring it up again. Huh? So has that given you the new car that you have, your heart desires? Jesus said, all these things the Gentiles seek after, what are the things the Gentiles seek after? You know them. Don't be ashamed of them. You know them. And he said, your father knows that you need them. So that time your car is breaking down on the road and you're standing by the road and people are passing you. You think God is pleased? You think God looks at you and says, that's my son. He will not steal. I love him so much. He will not steal. That would be a very cheap God. I don't think I want to be associated with that type of God. That will be glad you're suffering and, and say you're bringing him glory. What kind of glory is that? Sorry, I don't get. Who celebrates that kind of glory? That your car breaks down every day when you're coming to work. And eventually somebody with a stolen car will now stop. I say, ah, you're getting late too. Why don't you come to work? And it's true. I'm getting late. So let me just lock the car. I've called the mechanic. He's coming. He now sit down in that stolen car. And he's going, this is blowing you. Stolen car. And he now gets to work. Say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now there's a, I'll never steal. I'm telling you very soon. Very soon you will steal. If you continue like that, you will soon steal. Because one day you just ask yourself, eh, but he's the one, they are the ones helping me. So if I stay like them, I'll be helping others. See, you see where is you see where Satan will begin to play with your mind. So when God is talking to you, now now you want to keep his word, and then you're relating with him, and he's talking to you. So Lord, what should I do? You must ask that question. What should I do? Mm -hmm. now you're talking because sometimes God doesn't speak to you because you're not ready to listen so what should I do and God will give you a simple instruction very simple instruction how simple Pastor Tua, how simple because I want to know I say, go and talk to him. You're asking me what to tell you. You see, that's the problem with a lot of people. You, you finish teaching them something, they still want to. So, so okay. All these things you've taught, what's the, give me four points. One, two, three, four. What am I supposed to do? I said, I've been teaching you how to ask God. You finish listening to all that teaching. Now come and say, now, okay, tell me, what should I do? He's the one that will tell you what to do. I can give you an idea. See, now the Lord knows you want to move to another level. The first thing he will try to do is to break the things that you depend on. And those things you depend on are the things that have been limiting you. So the Lord says, from henceforth, I, I want you to listen, I'm not saying this exactly, but I'm telling you the kind of things God can say to you. He said, from henceforth, the moment you receive your salary, I want you to give it as a seed to the poor, give it to the church, give it to anybody. He says, I want you to give it. Okay. And then you go, huh? I've not finished handling the little I get. Now you're... That's the day you now realize that that has been your limitation. And you now battle with that and battle with that. And battle. say, Lord, is there no other way? Do you want me to help you? Yes, sir. Then do it. Obey me. Now he's giving you something to obey. That is where your life, your transformation of your life begins. It might take you six months. You're, you're struggling with it and struggling with it and struggling. Finally, you decide to, okay, Lord, I'm going to trust you. 
I'm because see, he's preparing your heart for what he wants to do in your life. So is it that time you're struggling with it? He's not perturbed. Why? Because as you're struggling, you will ask a question, he will answer. As you're struggling, you ask a question, he will answer. Finally, you come to that place where your heart can receive it. Now, this is your dealing with God, not a man. God, he said, I'll do it. I'll do it. And then you're bold enough to do it. You get your pay and then you release it. <sighs> oh, <laughs> Lord, Lord, now you're walking with me. Be careful. Let it not be that it's a man that is telling you this. Because if it's a man, you'll not be looking at the man and says, I've not seen anything yet. Oh, two days have passed. I've not seen anything yet. too. Oh. As a pastor, you know, you, you avoid doing this. You know this is the truth, but you don't want to talk about it. When you're dealing with people one-on-one, -on -one, you don't want to talk about it. Because the, the way people's mind function is that pastor that told me, oh, now can you imagine? But see, when it is the Lord, then you'll be. Then suddenly, there is a shaking. There is an opening. And you're promoted. Your finances are increased. Or there's an opening and, and more money comes to you. Or someone walks up to you and says, God said I should give you this car. Say, so why would that happen? The same way, you see, the same way you obeyed when God says, give your salary to so so and so. The same way you obeyed, see, it happened to you. You had God instruct you to give your salary. It's the same way someone will hear God say to them, give this person your car. So if you can obey God, why do you think someone else cannot obey God? You see how it works? Whatsoever a man sows, that is what he will reap. You can obey God to give that your salary to someone else. Why do you think it is difficult for another person like you to obey God to give you his all? Think about that because my time is up. Praise God. Oh, Father, we give you praise. Thank you for what you're doing. You're, you're bringing your truth and it's working in our lives. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.